Good evening, directors, staff, and members of the public. I will now call this February 8th, 2022 regular business meeting to order. We will begin tonight by acknowledging that buildings within Minneapolis Public Schools are located within the traditional homelands of the Dakota people. Minnesota comes from the Dakota phrase for this region, Minnesota Makoche, translating to the land where the water reflects the skies or cloudy waters. MPS recognizes the original peoples of this place and is committed to make ongoing efforts to educate the community about the Dakota people, the relationship Dakota people have to this area, both historically and today, as they remain here in their home. Thank you. We once again begin a meeting on the heels of our community confronting the horrific killings of two young black lives. Last week, Jamari Rice was shot and killed outside of a school in Richfield, and Amir Locke was killed by Minneapolis police officers as he lay sleeping on a couch in a downtown Minneapolis apartment building. As a parent and on behalf of the board, I want to express my deepest condolences to the families and friends of these two young men. Every parent's worst nightmare became a reality for Jamari and Amir's parents last week, and you are in our thoughts and our hearts break for you. Each on their own is an almost unthinkable tragedy, but together, Jamari and Amir's deaths, while unrelated, represent the continued pattern of a violent, racist, and oppressive society in which we must not become numb. Today, across the metro, students were compelled to walk out of their schools, one of the places in the world they most want and need to be because we adults have failed them. We failed to protect them. We failed to act in a way that meets the crises that again claims more lives. I am tired. Our students are tired. We are all tired, but we must not give up and we must not slow the pace change. We must continue to act with urgency and with courage to fix the issues that cause our children to have to leave their schools to stand up where we fell down. Systems of oppression seek to wear down resistance and wear down those who seek justice. Systems of oppression play the long game and they assume those who are neutral will remain on the sidelines. Don't. They gain power and they are emboldened when they aren't held accountable for their abhorrent actions, both individually and structurally. I call on us all to learn from our students and to heed their call but to not for one minute abdicate our responsibility as adults and leaders to protect them and teach them. We are the adults, they are the children. We cannot slow down and we cannot fail them again. This is not an option. Later tonight, we will approve a new strategic plan and vision for our district that among other things calls for us to provide an anti-racist education for our students. This must not mean just teaching them how we should behave, but we also need to actively model anti-racist behavior that will disrupt white supremacy and oppression in all forms, both within our schools and district and in community. From gun violence that disproportionately impacts people of color, particularly men, black men, to the police accountability, we know what we, can, we need to do. We just need the courage to face it. I will look to our students for that courage, and I ask you to join me. Thank you. Okay, as a reminder, for anyone speaking tonight, including during public comment, at the podium, please speak directly, clearly, and loudly into the microphone. For the benefit of all of us, but especially for our interpreters, for those using closed captions, and for those who normally rely on seeing faces to help them understand, we really do need to project our voices to be heard through masks. And if you do briefly remove your mask to speak, please remember to put it back on properly after you've spoken. Finally, I would also like to ask that anyone here in attendance who did not register in advance online or with the board office to please make sure you have signed in as you've entered the room. Um, this will assist us um, in the event that we need to do COVID-19 related contact tracing or notifications. 
please let the record reflect that Director Polly is excused from attending the meeting tonight as he is following health guidelines related to COVID-19 protocols. But he is watching online, my Director Polly. Clerk Inns, will you please call the roll for the record? Director Arneson? Here. Director Alamin? Here. Director Ali? Here. Director Salillo? Here. Mrs. Sears, Director Jordan? Here. Director Sweeney? Present. Director Polly? Director Ellison? Here. Student Representative Wesson? Here. Student Representative Rand? Here. Thank you. We have a quorum. Next, we will approve our agenda for the rest of the evening. Director Arneson, will you please move approval of the agenda? So moved. Second. Thank you. Our agenda has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That motion carries and we have an approved agenda. Director Inns, can I please get a motion to approve the minutes before us? So moved. Thank you. The minutes is presented for the January 11th and January 31st meetings have been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion or any corrections? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say nay. That motion carries and these minutes are approved. Next, I am very excited to introduce and welcome our 2022 student representatives. As you will remember, at the recommendation of our 2021 representative, Mary Gabra Meskel, we will have two students beginning this year who will share the duties and rotate months here on the dais as the primary speaker. Jake Wesson, a sophomore at Washburn and Kennedy Rance, a junior at Henry were highly recommended by their peers for these roles. The students who reviewed their applications and interviewed them, as well as those who recommended them all shared how both would do an outstanding job here, listening to all students and then reflecting that voice on the dais. We look forward to getting to know you um, and working together to ensure student perspective is directly built into our board work. So thank you, student representatives Rance and Wesson will rotate months, as I said, here on the dais as the primary speaker with Jake beginning with February. Please join me in congratulating and welcoming student representative Kennedy Rance and student representative Jake Wesson to the board. Thank you. Next, we will hear public comments, both left by voicemail as well as from those who signed up in advance to provide comment in person. First, we will hear comments submitted by voicemail, which I will now ask staff to play. Gary Marvin Davison, New Salem Educational Initiative. Just a few blocks from the Davis Center, teaching students whom you academically abuse every day your feet at the ground. Extended comments at newsalemeducation.blogspot.com, where a soaring um, readership understands those things that you do not seem to be able to understand. Time after time, scenes such as that catastrophic scene that played out in the Richfield schools takes place throughout the Twin Cities, all too many, in my beloved North Minneapolis. <laughs> when students are in a system that does not provide them the skills that they need, when those People who manage to graduate go forth into society bearing a piece of paper that is a diploma in name only, bereft of skills, lack of knowledge, then there are only so many options. Because of the weight of history, too many of our families are not as they should be. That leaves the public schools to provide the knowledge and skills that people need, too many of our young people. Retreat to the streets, live a life that can only lead to an early death or to time in prison. You are responsible for that, and you are doing none of those things that you need to do to provide these young people with the skills and the knowledge that they need. 
get new leadership, empty the Department of Teaching and Learning, put a program in that reaches Hello, Ellen. I'm Ellen Gettler. I have two students at Bethune Arts Magnet. I first want to say that I saw how incredibly hard teachers have been working during these last two weeks when we had to shut down, a time that was necessary, but really difficult, I know, for teachers and staff and parents and students. And so I'm just so grateful for how hard teachers have been working, especially during this time of added hardship and transition. Having online learning is also an opportunity for parents to kind of glimpse how amazing our teachers are in the classroom. Right now, one of my kids has a teacher of color, and our experience with her as his teacher has been really transformative. She is somebody who skillfully builds relationship in a diverse classroom. She brings in incredible cultural competency. She cultivates just curiosity in the students to meet them where, they're, where they are and invite them into the learning. And she just holds space for kids' identities. And the result is that my son, who's a white student, is more confident, he's more engaged, more connected, more participatory than really he has been in any other year. Now, I know that there are just a few weeks left in the negotiation with MFT, and I want to urge the board to please give the superintendent the direction and power that he needs to protect our teachers of color in these negotiations. Our teachers of color are the most valuable and really among the rarest assets that we have in our district. Thank you. Hello, my name is Krista Hogan and I'm a resident of Minneapolis. I am asking the Minneapolis School Board once again to take action on the unacceptable education outcomes in MPS schools for black and other students of color. The community has been asking for the board to limit Superintendent Graff's contract to a year long probationary contract for weeks. Why is it taking so long to take action on this? The lack of a clear and effective plan and the decrease in academic outcomes for black students over the last four years should speak for itself. We need to hold leaders accountable when students aren't getting their needs met. We live in a country steeped in racist systems that disadvantage people of color and our schools are no exception. These racist systems will continue to be upheld if we don't take action to hold leaders accountable to change. MPS needs leadership that can take feedback from the community and put plans in place through an anti-racism, anti-racist lens, which actually drive measurable improvements in academic outcomes. Black students and other students of color are being denied their fundamental right of receiving an effective education. Please take action to hold MPS leadership to this standard. Thank you. Hi, my name is Paula Luxemburg, and I'm the parent of three children, two of whom are currently students at Bethune, and one will be an incoming kindergartner for next fall. And I am calling tonight to talk about the importance of teachers of color and to encourage NPS and MST to, over the next three weeks, hash out the language, get something in writing, sign it to protect teachers of color from layoffs. Teachers of color are so important to our students, to all students. I'm the white parent of white children, and it is important to me that my children see um, teachers of color, particularly black teachers, Latin A teachers, Asian teachers, native teachers in positions of power in their classrooms and in their schools. And my children attend a majority black school. And as I talk to black parents of black students there, I hear over and over again how important it is for my children's classmates to have teachers who look like them. Their parents talk about how their children listen better when they feel like their teacher understands their culture and understands what they've gone through and understands the daily trauma that they face from racism. So please, I know both sides in these negotiations are saying the right things about the importance of teachers of color, but actions matter so much more than words. And we cannot afford an MPS to lose a single teacher of color in layoffs. Um, 
because two sides couldn't figure out how to get the deal done in time. I really implore you to set everything else aside and in your negotiations over these next three weeks, hash out how to protect every single educator of color that NPS has. Thank you. Good evening, members of the board and members of the public present tonight. My name is Lily Tibuto, and I'm a member of the Racial Justice Network. I'm also a 10-year employee of the Minneapolis Public Schools. I'm speaking for the third board meeting in a row about your negotiations with Superintendent Graff's next contract. You've been asked to limit negotiations to a one-year probationary contract, and you have yet to provide a response. You have an opportunity to hold Superintendent Graff to a necessary standard that he has not met in his last five years. I would add that his leadership has in fact caused further decline in the standard of educational outcomes for black students particularly. You also have an opportunity to provide students, families, and community with an answer to our demands for this one-year contract. We deserve answers, not just lip service. And in this very uncertain time, the families of MPS deserve to have a decision about district leadership as soon as possible. Please take these opportunities by approving a one-year probationary contract only. In addition to the need for a decision on the superintendent's contract, I'd like to address the issue of contract negotiations with both the ESP and teacher chapters of MFT. Along with the Racial Justice Network, I support the contract proposals from the ESPs and ask that you prioritize their need for a livable wage and address the obscenely high cost of health care for ESPs. Educational service professionals alone make up the majority of our educators of color in this district. And by investing in them, you are investing in the educational outcome for all students because representation matters. I also ask that you support the proposals put forth by the MFT teacher chapter to protect and retain teachers of color for these same reasons. Thank you for your time. Hello, my name is Sarah Greenfield. I'm the parent of a child at Bancroft Elementary and also a graduate of Minneapolis Public Schools. Um, as much as we have tried to live in a diverse neighborhood and send our daughter to a racially diverse school, our daughter who is white is being taught entirely, occasionally almost entirely by uh, white teachers. Um, and no matter what lessons we try to teach her in the rest of her life, that lesson also is seeping into her, I think, about what that uh, what that experience teaches her about her relationship to uh, to people of color and what roles they have in her life. I've also had multiple friends, uh, parents of children of color who have been looking for schools and been looking outside of Minneapolis or looking at charters because they cannot afford to have their children absorb those same experiences and lessons. And I don't know exactly what that says about us and our family that we are um, taking that risk with our white child um, and I'm not sure that that's a good choice on our part. Um, so I hope that the highest priority in the uh, negotiations around the contract now from both sides will be finding a way that will stand up in court and that will work for all our kids to make sure that we protect the teachers of color that are in the Minneapolis public schools and that that number grows. Uh, thank you. Hello, my name is Shakiva Buchanan. I have two daughters who attend Minneapolis public schools. I wanna start off by saying thank you so much for allowing my daughters to attend in-person school so I'm able to keep my job and continue to work. I really appreciate that. That helped me a lot. And I just thought I'd let you know that, you know, I appreciate you for giving us that option for those who work. I also want to say please sign the MOA petition to protect teachers of color before the end of the month. Schools need to have teachers of color because it's a big help. It's a big help for students of color to attend because teachers of color understand our background and some kids act out in behavior because, you know, they feel like people don't care. When teachers of color are there, they can be there to help redirect the students and get them back on pace. I just also want to say thank you for allowing me to have this opportunity to be heard. 
and you all have a wonderful day. My name is Sonia Emmerich. I am an MPS graduate, and I am also an MPS parent, and I'm calling today to urge the school board to adopt the memorandum of agreement to retain our educators of color. We have a school district that has a global majority representation in our student body, and we are nowhere near reflecting that back to our students in their force of educators. Students deserve to go to school and have educators that look like them and that share lived experience with them in every discipline, every school, every grade level, every specialization. We need to both adopt this memorandum of agreement quickly in order to protect educators of color from the potential layoffs and excesses that may be coming due to declining enrollment. And we need to ensure that we are tracked to increase the number of educators of color that we have in our district. It's vitally important. It's a public health issue. It protects safety and outcomes for our most underserved BIPOC student population, and it needs to be prioritized now. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we will hear from those who signed up to provide comment with us here tonight. As staff projects, the speaker list, when our first speaker comes to the podium, I will again remind us of all the public comment guidelines. Commenters should begin by stating their name and relationship to Minneapolis Public Schools. Comments can be no more than two minutes each and must not mention identifiable information about individual staff or students and must not include profanity, insults, or threats. If identifiable information about individual students or staff are mentioned, I will turn off the microphone and end your comment time. And finally, please remember that this is an opportunity for us to hear from the community and we will not respond in the moment to comments or questions. Coolia Pringle, will you please come to the podium and you can begin your comment. public schools, I'm handing my time over to a mom that has a child in Minneapolis Public Schools. Okay, yo soy, buenas tardes, soy Marisol Rodríguez, eh, mi hijo está en Fowell. Él tuvo un incidente con un maestro de educación física. El, um, el maestro es un poco, su, su manera de educar es un poco estricta, y obsoleta y, y bueno disculpen él él es un poco mayor y la manera de dirigirse hacia los alumnos es um, un poco fuerte ellos se sienten un poco intimidados y, y yo eh, mi queja es um, hablar a la escuela para decirles que disculpen mi hijo no quería ir a la escuela ya porque um, se sentía Bueno, se sentía mal con el ma de tener la clase con el maestro. Entonces, um, yo hablé a la escuela y le digo, si, si yo estoy dejando a mi hijo en un lugar donde yo pienso que va a estar seguro, quiero llorar, donde pienso que va a estar seguro, entonces, um, ustedes están, están educados, está, ustedes estudiaron para, para educar y formar a niños uh, para que ellos crezcan bien, no para hacerlos inseguros o tener miedo. Entonces, eh, la persona que me, que me contestó me dijo que, que ellos, ellos eh, iban a hacer algo, pero le dije, no, no es cierto, no hacen nada, porque yo le digo a mi hijo, eh, habla con el maestro, dile eh, cuál es tu... Um, lo que tú necesitas y me dice, pero es que el maestro no hace nada. O yo hablé también con otra persona y no hizo nada. Ya, o sigo hablando. Es para I would like to address a uh, situation in regard to my son. I apologize if I am somehow very emotional and at the same time trying to summarize the situation. My son attends a school and he has been facing several problems in regard to behavior and the way he is being treated, what I would categorize that he's being mistreated by 
most of the staff due to our differences with the rest of the staff or the peers and the in the school and in the classroom. So um, being brief in regards to what I can explain to you, I will explain that my son is very t b many times very afraid of attending a school and I have called to school in regard to the explanation why my son is not attending a school due to factors of discrimination and mistreatment by the staff and by other peers. And I, at this point, I would like to mention that being at the school, you are the educators, you are responsible of the dynamic in the in the any school in the district. And the fact that you have gone through a school and been educated on how to treat children and how to educate it is really failing my son. I have in, in faced situations where my son is really afraid, and I apologize if I'm getting so very emotional, but this is the situation, and I think at this point I need an intervention in regard to the situation so I can, you guys can take care of this and really walk the talk in regard to the education of my son. And I would like not to continue because otherwise I'm going to get very emotional and I don't want to cry in public. Thank you. Thank you, Gracias. Um, Associate Superintendent Rochelle Cox is available to speak with you. Um, so thank you. Uh, Cheryl Persigo. Good evening. I'm here again as a member of Racial Justice Network and as a parent of South High alumni. And I stand in solidarity with all the parents who have already commented about calling for the memorandum of agreement to protect teachers of color and in also calling for a living wage for our, e our P um, ESPs. I'm also here to ask about the status of Superintendent Graff's contract. In early November, we and a coalition of many others called on this board to offer a one-year probationary contract with academic performance metrics, and we have heard nothing. Our understanding when you voted to begin negotiations in October is that you would be moving quickly and that would be wrapping up um, at the end of the year, and that was three months ago. Why is this taking so long? Where is the communication? Let me just revisit the case for why the one-year contract is so important. Mr. Graff came into this role five years ago, and we've been waiting that entire time for enrollment to increase and disparities to decrease. And we're still waiting, because enrollment has decreased a total of nearly 15% in a little over five years, and the disparities have widened. This is not stability, and this is not success. And by the way, a new strategy is not a plan. That's why we need this, a one-year contract, setting the terms for change. That's what this is. A one-year contract with metrics is simply setting the terms for change, for real change. We need a superintendent who will lead not from his point of comfort, but from our students' point of need. We don't need change in the number of buildings and start times and bus schedules. We need change at the point of learning. What, we're waiting, what are we waiting for? You tell me. Set the terms for real change with the superintendent. Approve a one-year contract. Thank you. Tanya Dran. Hello, my name is Tanya Dran. I'm with the National Parent Union in Uplift, Minnesota, and I'm going to yield my time to Titi. Hi, everybody. Titi Layo Bidiasco, Executive Director of Lee Wen Institute. I first want to give a shout out and thanks to Director Caprini and the eloquent voice of Director El Amin for standing with black mothers 
and black women yesterday in terms of the brutal murder of our son, Amir Locke. It was really good to see y'all and your leadership, really important. And it's that kind of leadership that we need. We Win Institute has a partnership with the Minneapolis Public Schools. And one of the things that we do is after school program. And I decided that one of the things that doesn't happen here enough is that we don't see things that students do. And so we have children only a small amount of time. And one of the things that we did with children in, in groups was that they drew pictures of Dr. King and learned about Dr. King. And what their assignment was, and they wrote essays about a statement that Dr. King wrote that said, um, talked about riots were the voices of the unheard. And what they did is they wrote essays in terms of what they felt like when they were unheard. And many of them talked about how many times they felt unheard in school by their teachers. I, my heart almost broke when I was listening to parents feeling like they were almost begging for school to be open and thanking you for doing the right thing or begging for black teachers and we have so many of our students look like me and look like you. I don't ever see you, Superintendent Graff, in my community. Do you even know who our leaders are? Where were you yesterday? Just need, not having to take a position, but just supporting black mothers because we lost our baby. Thank you. Vote, cr create something in terms of creating a contract in terms of 2022 and moving forward. It needs to be conditional, but it seems to me in terms of the training, Mr. Graff, that you need to have some training in terms of what it's like, in terms of working with people of color, because clearly you don't understand. Do you know, do you know? Thank you. Do you know who our leaders are? Do you have conversations with us? Are you partnering with us? And it's time. It's time in terms of 2022 to get this one year contract on the board and have measurements by which we as a community can judge it. Thank you. Thank you. Maria. We have Maria Cisneros who I'm gonna be interviewing for. Um, buenas tardes, uh, mi nombre es Maria Cisneros. Um, yo represento la Unión Nacional de Padres de Familias Latinas. Good afternoon, thank you everybody. I do represent, my name is Maria Cisneros and I do represent the National Association of Latino Parents. Y el día, el día de hoy estoy aquí para hacerles saber que uh, nuestra alfabetización de nuestros niños no es muy buena. El, el nivel que ellos tienen es demasiado bajo en nuestra comunidad de color. And I will mention to you that at this point, our community of color and the level that we have for reading and writing for our kids is very, very low. Y a otra situación también que es una vergüenza que nuestras, las escuelas donde asisten nuestros niños de color no tengan intérprete, porque han estado pasando bastantes problemas con, con nosotros los padres latinos y no hay com buena comunicación con los maestros, el director o el subdirector, porque no hay, no hay intérpretes en persona. And another, th and another thing that is quite shameful for the district is that they do not pr provide an interpreter for the schools as a liaison, and so we have problems with the principal, with the uh, assistant to the principal, with the social workers, lately in the last few months and we have the problems with the parents that they are not being heard, they're not being taken care of and our children are paying the bill. Y necesitamos también que haya más maestros de color porque ellos van a entender a nuestros niños, van a entender la cultura y necesitamos también más trabajadores sociales, necesitamos más mentores para nuestros niños porque ahorita hay mucha depresión. And also, it's very important that we are demanding that we have more teachers of color, more social workers, because our children benefit as being children of color from people who are teaching them. They are also from the same background. 
And also it's very important to have the addition of social workers and helpers in the schools as we are through the COVID and the pandemic issues, we have a lot of, we are dealing with a lot of depression in our children. Necesitamos también que las escuelas estén más seguras, que nuestros niños no estén pasando a uh, tanto problema, porque muchas de las veces la mesa directiva se siente muy, muy amplia, no toman el tiempo para ir a ver qué es lo que está pasando dentro de las escuelas y con las familias de color. Gracias. And I will point out a problem that we have with this community because you guys do not take the time to go and visit our schools. You do not know how safe or how unsafe the schools are. We are demanding to have more security in our schools because our children go to school to learn not to be unsafe. So it is very important that you take care of these issues that we are conveying to you. Thank you. Lydia Huff. Good evening, my name is Lydia Huff. I am a junior at South High, and I'm here today to talk about the lack of accessible all gender bathrooms in Minneapolis public schools, an issue which many other students and I have been working on for five years. This is an equity issue that affects both physical and mental health. The lack of a proper bathroom can lead to anxiety, dysphoria, depression, dehydration, and potential UTIs. While some schools do have the option of an all gender bathroom, they are not accessible as they remain locked or in the nurse's office. Bathrooms are a basic right, and yet many students don't have the option of one. Single stall all gender bathrooms would not only benefit gender queer students, but would also address issues surrounding religious accommodations, increased privacy, and medical needs. In 2020, we conducted a survey of MPS students about their opinions on all gender bathrooms. We received 648 responses from 14 different middle and high schools. Of these responses, 62% of students said that they would feel comfortable using either the multi-stall binary bathrooms or an all-gender bathroom, and 21% of students said that they would prefer using an all-gender bathroom. When asked if they knew someone who had felt unsafe in a binary bathroom, 27% of students said yes. When asked if students would like to see the addition of an all-gender bathroom in their school, 65% said yes. This shows that students are in strong support of this project and would like to see it in their schools. In order, in order to further inclusion in MPS, we are asking for the board to provide funding for lock and sign changes and, and, to, and to require all future school renovations to include a multi-stall all-gender bathroom in the capital plan. Accessible all-gender bathrooms in every school are needed in order to make Minneapolis public schools a more welcoming and inclusive place for all. We look forward to continuing this conversation with you. Thank you. Thank you. Anna Borowski. Is Anna here? Hi, my name is Anna Borowski. Um, I'm the white parent of two white incoming kindergartners. I wanna add my voice to those who are and have been calling for supportive teachers of color. We already have too few black and other teachers of color in our district, and we can't afford to lose any more. Teachers of color must be a priority in the contract. A diverse population of teachers improves education for all students, especially students of color. Thanks. Thank you. Nafisa Muhammad. My name is Nafisa Muhammad, and I am a proud black parent and educator with Minneapolis Public Schools. I'm here to urge the board to wrap up negotiations with Pre uh, Superintendent Ed Graff's one-year contract. Let's make history by finally holding a white man accountable for their ineffective leadership and privileged mediocre mediocrity. Let's send a message to the community and to the educators that you hear their cries and you are committed to educational justice, just like the rest of us. I am also an exhausted and an emotionally drained black parent educator as well. I am tired of fighting the system that is supposed to uplift and inspire my people, not overwhelm us, not overwork us, not ignore us, not tear us down, not push us out, not exploit us and silence us in the process. I am one 
but many black parents and educators who find this district guilty of reproducing a toxic culture for black folks to work and for black children to learn. Dr. Kona West says justice is what love looks like in public. The opposite of love looks like what we get in Ed Graff's leadership. Chattel slavery supposedly ended, but he's okay with paying black educators oppressive wages while reproducing illiteracy. Nothing has gotten better under this man's leadership. He will go down in history as the superintendent who relocated thousands of students during a global pandemic, refused black parents who begged to stay in their thriving black schools, forced hundreds of ed educators to relocate school communities during a pandemic while refusing to ensure educators of color are paid well, supported, and protected. Right now, he is refusing to show real leadership and e economic justice by paying the paraprofessionals a respectable and livable wage. And yet, he piles on more work and pays them less. Also, why is the MOA to protect teachers of color being delayed? The MOA would save so many teachers of color who are at risk of being laid off at the end of February. Let's make history by believing the people when they say he doesn't want to be here. He is clearly dissatisfied with his position and his responsibilities. So board, please take the lead. Wrap up this one year contract, sign the MOA, and pay the educators what they deserve to be paid. Thank you. Thank you, Elijah Norris. Too, by the way, Sherry, listen, so I'll be respectful of time. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. There's three things that I want you all to ponder tonight. The first thing is, what is the standard? What is the standard? What is the standard that we are setting for our student achievement? What is the standard for our student outcomes? What is the message that we're sending our students when we send them to school? Right now, I'll tell you there is a low standard for our student achievements, especially students that look like me. I'll tell you about the proficiencies that we have right now. They're inadequate. 23% of our kids can do mathematics proficiently that look like me. 27% of the kids that look like me can read and write at a proficient level. Those are abominable rates. Minneapolis has been known to have some of the worst discrepancies in education for our black students. So again, I ask you, what is the standards? Superintendent Graff, I'm gonna go against some of my colleagues now. Um, although I agree with them completely that we do need to limit your contract to a one-year contract, for sure, until you produce some outcomes for our students. But I'm gonna throw you a bone. MPS have long failed our students that look like me, long before you. And until we set higher standards for our students, we're gonna continue to fail those students, long after AirGraph leaves this district. So we need to set a new standard for what our outcomes for our students will be, especially those that are black students and brown students. The second thing I want you to ponder, what happens to a student that leaves MPS and can't read, write, and do mathematics at a proficient rate? I'll tell you what happens. They end up in the JDC in Ramsey County. They end up in Skyview in Minneapolis. They end up in Red Wing. They end up in Moorhead. And after that, they end up in an adult prison. That's what happens to them. Or they go to the cemetery, or they're out on the street right there on Broadway in Lindale. That's what happens to our students that leave MPS and can't read, write, and do mathematics. That is the reality that our kids are facing every single day. The third thing, our kids right now are going through a lot. I sit back and I hear the teachers, you know, they talk about what they're going through, hear administrators talk about what they're going through. No one ever talks about what the students are going through right now in the schools. Our students right now are struggling. I asked the board, and I asked our administrators to make resources available for our students who are seeking mental health support. They need this more than ever. We're dealing with a pandemic. We're dealing with racial unrest. We're dealing with police officers continuing to kill black men and black women in the streets. We're dealing with so much violence in our communities. Our students, when they go to school, they want to learn and they want to be in an environment that actually contributes to their growth and their development. And when they ask you all for mental health care support, it needs to be there and it needs to be accessible. And I believe I've reached my three minutes. Thank you. Well, I got 20 seconds left. It's a two minute limit. The two, I thought it was three minutes. You guys change limit. it? It's a two minute limit, yes. Whoa, 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 whoa. We got to revise so. this thing then. A lot of people are going over by <laughs> Thank two you, minutes. Thank you, Mr. Norris. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Bree Thompson. Bree? Is Bree here?
Good evening, everyone. My name is Brianna Thompson. Um, I have children who attend MPS, and I'm an MPS graduate myself. I'm here tonight to discuss the issues regarding layoffs to teachers of color. It's important to me that my children have access to teachers of color throughout their educational journey. Children of color need teachers who look like them, who can relate to them, and who can advocate for them. If they don't, it can have a negative impact. I know that firsthand. I went to MPS from high five all the way to 12th grade. If you do the math, that's 14 years. Out of those 14 years, I only had four teachers of color. And after a while, I started to think that teachers of color just didn't fit those positions. I was wrong. They can be and they should be. I want, di I want a different experience for my children and all the other children of color within MPS. Signing the MOA to protect our teachers of color is a must. Let's do the right thing. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Laura Ray. Oh, goodness. Okay. Hello, good evening. My name is Laura Ray. I am the parent of two students who attend Hall STEM Academy in Minneapolis. I'm here this evening because I want my children to have a good experience in the Minneapolis public schools. How far have we really come? Ruby Bridges was a lonely black girl who had to be escorted because she was integrating a school. Now fast forward to the 21st century. The data in the state of Minnesota, city of Minneapolis, 3,000 teachers in the district. There are only 204 black teachers. That's a ratio of 55 black students to one black, excuse me, to one black teacher. White students and white teachers have a ratio of five to one. That is not fair. Change the language in the contract so it can be, so it can protect all teachers, but first and foremost, teachers of color from being let go just because they are the least senior teachers at the time. Keep the new teachers of color and hire more teachers of color for the district. Let my children and other black children see black people, excuse me, see people that look like them actually teach subjects and not just be behavior specialists in elementary, junior high, and high school. Our kids need to see a racial mirror everywhere and not just where they get in trouble. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Sandra Samuels. <clears throat> Good evening, everybody. I'm Madam Chair, Board Chair. Uh, Superintendent. Uh, my name is Sandra Samuels and I am President and CEO of the Northside Achievement Zone and I am here tonight to talk about um, desperately asking you to do whatever you can to protect teachers of color. I want to start out by thanking you all for keeping our schools open uh, in the face of all kind of pushback. Um, we needed that. I represent close to a thousand families and uh, 2,000 students. Several, many are in, in, uh, in your schools in our schools, and uh, so thank you for that. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm thankful for the teachers. Our parents did a survey, and they said that they know the teachers are working overtime, right? And so, but, but I'm asking you, as we look at the violence that's happening in our city right now um, with uh, the murder of George Floyd, um, the murder of Amir that just happened, it is all about racism. All of it is about racism. And what I keep saying is that the murder by police is the tip of the racist iceberg below the waterline, and that is egregious. Below the waterline is the community violence. That's what um, many of our children are, are experiencing. But it's also education. It's the disparities in education. And many people talked here tonight about the need for us to raise our standards, to have better outcomes for our children. They deserve it, to have mental health support. But we know all of the studies. I'm not even going to give you numbers, because sharing the numbers, everybody knows. Everybody knows that violence to not just address the symptoms. You get on the ground in community and you change the systems that support families on the ground. 
number one are schools. And we know all of the data around what it means to have a black or brown teacher in front of black and brown students. You all know that we have majority BIPOC students in our schools, but the teachers are majority white. You all know what the data says around, especially for black boys, the propensity for them to actually graduate and matriculate to higher ed if they've had one black teacher and especially a male before third grade. I mean, the data is clear. And around racial justice, um, happy Black History Month. Um, the reason we sing young, gifted, and black, because you never hear white people saying young, gifted, and white. The reason we say young, gifted, and black is because black kids don't see themselves reflected in society and in front of their classrooms. And so I'm asking you, because this is about justice, it is about quelling the violence, and we can do it. Make sure you protect teachers of color. And if, and if, with MFT, um, when you get into negotiations, um, and it doesn't happen, we need to hold the, the parties accountable for that not happening. So we're asking, we're demanding trans transparency. Where did you stand and where did MFT stand? Because we know last in, first out means black people are out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again to everyone who took time to share their perspective and their comments with us here tonight, both virtually and by voicemail and here in person. We're now gonna take a 15 minute recess. Directors, we will reconvene at 6.38.
Our next item is reports and recommendations from the superintendent. Superintendent Graff, please go ahead with comments and reports for the evening. Thank you, Chair Ellison, and good evening, uh, student representatives Rance and Weston, board directors, and those joining us here uh, as well as virtually. Thank you for being here tonight. I would like to just begin by echoing Chair Ellison's uh, condolences to the families of Amir Locke and Jamari Rice. Um, I know that, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I know that uh, all of us have been dealing with some very concerning incidents that have occurred over the last week here in the city of Minneapolis, and I, I do ask all of us to reflect and look on how our individual actions or lack of action contribute to, to a society in which these tragedies are so common, in particular with the young black men. We'll also note, as always, we have staff and resources available for our, our students in our schools as they try to process these events as best as possible. At the same time, acknowledging that our, our staff, especially our employees of color, are also having to deal with the implications of these events themselves. And I too look for our students um, for inspiration and support on how we can do better and what we can do and to support a better future for them. So I'm appreciative of having our two new student representatives here this evening and, and fortunate to have them as a part of our voice as leaders of our students here with us on the board. Um, I look forward to working with you and learning from each of you. So with that, all that's going on in our community, uh, we're even more excited to welcome our students back to in-person learning this past week um, after the temporary shift to online learning as we navigated the peak of the Omicron variant. And our focus for this past week was really getting our students reacclimated to being in the classroom so appreciate, uh, again, the patience that all of our families and students um, endured during that time away, that shift to online learning. And while there's so many things that are out of our control, like COVID-19 and the staffing shortages that impact operations, uh, there are many things like our classroom routines and rituals that are in our control. And we're grateful to our MPS staff and our leaders for reinforcing our students um, to support them as they return to in-person learning. Our plan moving forward, uh, re regarding the COVID-19 pandemic is to focus on a school-by-school -school response to the COVID issues. We'll continue to work in partnership with our regional support team and with the Minnesota Department of Health uh, to make sure that we're responding swiftly to any COVID-related matters. And I think it's fairly well known that we've received commendations for our ability to limit the spread of in-school infections through our health and safety protocols. Um, again, this has been possible because our staff and students are closely following the best practice recommendations from state and local health experts. And so we will continue to do that and offering all those layered mitigation strategies as best as possible. <clears throat> I'd also like to thank everyone, especially our students, um, staff and families, um, again, for your ongoing support and understanding of the flexibility that we might need as we um, have not reached the end of this, this COVID pandemic. And please know that we continue to do our best to keep everyone safe and learning. Uh, I also wanna reassure our community that I recognize our ongoing negotiations in several MPS employee bargaining groups is top of mind for many, including both our employees and families. And as superintendent, I'm committed to reaching agreements on all of our outstanding contracts as quickly as possible in a way that will best support our students, provide fair and beneficial terms for employees, and importantly, <clears throat> be financially realistic. And we've had those discussions um, now for, for many months and we've settled uh, contracts with many groups. However, we are in mediation with a number of them still, including the two largest, our Minneapolis Federation teacher, um, teacher chapter and the MFT educational support professionals. So once again, we're committed to honoring the principles of the mediation process, um, which does require us to adhere to the guidelines that they have in mediation. And so um, as we move forward with that, we'll share what details we can. Um, but beyond that at this time, um, I'm confident that all of us are committed to reaching agreements as quickly as possible. Next, I'm excited to highlight just a few of our district, a uh, few of the ways our district is marking and celebrating Black History Month, um, which runs throughout the month of February. Those of you who are here in attendance, hopefully noticed outside, uh, just outside of this room, the amazing artwork that we have on display in our gallery. Um, this, this exhibition is called Resilience in Action. 
and it was a partnership between the Minneapolis Public Schools Office of Black Student Achievement, our Family Engagement Department, and Arts, and features artwork by local artists, uh, community members, and Minneapolis Public School students. And last week we held a, an opening reception and uh, the art will be on display throughout the end of the month. And I encourage everyone who's here today in person to just take a moment to, to walk through there at the gallery and just see the amazing artwork that's been produced by our community, um, the powerful and beautiful work. And in addition, there are many of the uh, pieces on display where there's a little narrative or an explanation or reflection by the artist. Again, it's quite powerful and just um, represents not only the resilience but the brilliance of, of our students and our black community. Um, we also have a number of events taking place through this month. The Office of Black Student Achievement is hosting um, a series of events, um, one of which is African American Family Involvement Week, and events include a virtual family game night with prizes. They'll have family storytelling hour with timeless stories about blackness and black heroes. There's a film presentation and a panel discussion about black women as they unlock stories of their mothers and a family paint and pizza night. And so I encourage all of you to please visit uh, blackstudents.mpls.k12.mn.us backward slash events for more details. Next, I want to take a moment to offer congratulations to a few of our employees here in Minneapolis Public Schools. We have two teachers who have most deservedly been nominated for Education Minnesota's Teacher of the Year Award. We recently learned that Edward Barlow, a music teacher at Anwatton Middle School, and Aberdeen Rodriguez, an English teacher at Edison High School, have been nominated for this very prestigious award. Uh, so Craig, congratulations to, to both of uh, Ed and Aberdeen. And also want to congratulate um, at Anwatton Middle School also, um, Counselor uh, Jeanette Van Hayek, who has been named the Minnesota Middle School Counselor of the Year by the Minnesota School Counselor Association. Um, so outstanding recognition for our school counselor, um, Ms. Van Hayek, um, and also for our, our two educators. Our students are so fortunate to have staff members like all of them, and congratulations to you for your well-deserved recognitions. <clears throat> And in both cases, um, I'll just highlight that uh, as part of the process, the schools followed very extensive um, ways of gathering feedback and input, especially from students, and ultimately ended up with a single recommendation for, oops, excuse me, I missed my notes here. They, they did go through a process of gathering feedback and information for the, um, the adults who were recognized. Um, but finally, what I wanted to recognize was uh, the recommendation of two new school names um, for our um, the work that's gone on over the last couple of months with our um, school naming recommendation committee. So next month we'll have a review of, um, for the board to approve. And the two schools that we have are Jefferson, um, which is currently being recommended for Ella Baker, and Sheridan, which is Las Estrellas, which means the stars in English. Um, so in both of those cases, they did go through quite an extensive process. We do have Principal Kleppe, who's here this evening, um, and I've been able to review their document and we'll be sharing more information um, and recommending the names prior to next month's meeting. But I wanna note that both of these schools, again, were on the school board's uh, names advi naming advisory committee's list of schools that should be changed. And so congratulations um, for, for everyone who is involved in that process. And thank you again to the board for your support of taking that on. Um, we, we found that it was extremely helpful for our schools not to have to go through that process of determining whether or not they should have to change their name. Uh, there's enough work in just selecting a name, um, let alone having to, to go through the process of deciding if they should do that. So Chair Ellison, this concludes my comments this evening and um, just wanna say uh, thank you again to everyone for your outstanding work. Thank you, Superintendent. Um, next board, we were gonna vote on a few items. First is approval of the consent agenda. The consent agenda includes routine items that do not involve major policy, budget, or taxing decisions, bond awards, or items related to the superintendent's contract or evaluation. Director Caprini, will you please move approval of this item? So moved. Can I get a second? Second. Right. Thank you. Approval of the consent agenda has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. That motion carries and the consent agenda is approved. 
Next is approval of the district strategic plan for the next five years, which is an extension of the past few years work with the specific development taking place over the past six months. I will proudly move approval of the strategic plan, which is labeled as resolution 2022-15. Is there a second? second? Thank you. Approval of the strategic plan for school years 2022 to 2023 through 2026 to 2027 has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Director Surreal. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to bring uh, um, my concerns and uh, uh, the reason that I, I cannot vote to support this uh, today and my reasons are is that I feel that ELL students, special ed, and also homeless and highly mobile students are invisible to this plan. So I feel that we need to recommend strategies to improve the educational experience and outcomes of these students. And I just don't feel that it's very clear. Thank you. Anybody else have any comments, questions? Before we vote on this, seeing none, I want to th thank you, Director Elamine. I, I did just want to speak to a couple concerns um, that we've actually shared before bringing this to the voting point. Again, um, as a black woman for my community, I just really think that this is the time for us to clearly state what our intentions is for our black students and um, I know we've worked on this, but I, I think that we need to do some more work um, in trying to decide and be intentional with our plan on what we can do for our black children, our black families, um, and how we can move forward when it comes to the academics for our black students, our indigenous students within our community. So again, um, I know we've spent some time, but I don't think this is something that we need to rush through. And I've shared that before um, I think there needs to be more, there needs to be more time, more effort um, in how we want to intentionally state what the goal is, what our mission is, what our vision is for our black community and our black families. Would either one of you like to make a motion for any changes? Or... Thank you, Madam Chair. So you're proposing that uh, to bring forward a, uh, a motion to Let's make any change to extend the time to vote on this or the changes to this plan. Can we do that tonight? <laughs> Is that feasible that we like include yeah. ELL students, special ed, homeless and highly mobile students? Is that feasible? That will be a question that I will have for senior officer more specifically, because I did request this information before and I don't see it in here. Superintendent, just there. Yeah, thank you, Chair Olson, for the, the question. Um, I think if I'm hearing what you're asking for is we've spent uh, a few meetings kind of processing what uh, the board is wanting to have put into the strategic plan and I think we attempted to do that in good faith with uh, the feedback that we received and recognizing that um, not everyone was 100% aligned with some of the, the language and the words that were put in there. So it was the administration's attempt to, to try and do that as best as possible. And so if there are recommendations or suggestions that uh, board directors want to propose, then I think it's uh, the purview of the board to review that and um, vote on that motion. But I think the administration has done uh, the best I think that we can based on the feedback that we received in trying to accommodate the, the different perspectives. And I do appreciate that, the, the work that has been put into this. I just don't feel that we are, I am not speaking for myself, ready to move forward with uh, voting on this tonight. Feeling that uh, there are some empty spaces that need to be filled in. And the need to be rushing this is just, I don't feel comfortable. Thank you. Director Caprini. Uh, thank you, Chair Ellison. Um, I appreciate uh, Director Surreal's concerns um, about 
how she feels about rushing into voting on the strategic plan, as well as Director Elamine's concerns about um, the, you know, what is, what may or may not be missing. My concern um, is that we have had some really intense, deep discussions about the mission, the vision, um, and, and then adding the commitment to, uh, to students of color, ELL students. Um, and it's my belief that a lot of uh, what was presented in the last meeting um, was very detailed in uh, specifically the conditions uh, that students would be, um, that teachers would have an opportunity to determine the conditions in which uh, students' needs uh, need to be met in whatever capacity that is. Um, uh, so it's my belief that uh, the work that's gone on uh, from, from all of us, um, beginning from the retreat, all of those weeks and months, and um, the going backs and forths with staff and uh, questions and uh, information that's been provided um, has they've done their due diligence and uh, I don't see um, from my perspective that, that we're rushing into anything um, simply because um, we were all present at our board retreat we were all present during the several um, presentations that uh, staff has put together. And uh, I'm a firm believer as a board director that we have ample amount of time. And I wanna first say, I don't mean this at, at all disrespectfully because I have the utmost respect for, for, for both of you, all of you, um, everyone, I do. I have the utmost respect. We have ample amount of time to have discussions with staff, specifically our uh, board liaison uh, to discuss opportunities to write resolutions to to change um, some things and uh, that didn't happen and so i guess i'd like to offer if this is something that um, wasn't folks weren't aware of i'm sorry that that was the case i understand you you cannot support this strategic plan um, I don't feel we're rushing into anything. Um, I've been here for every one of the meetings. I've read thousands and thousands of documents uh, leading up to where we are. And uh, I think the time is now to, um, for us to be responsible for what we put together as a board. Thank you. Thank you. Director Enns. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I support this uh, strategic plan and I'm really glad that, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna be on the board uh, next year. Um, uh, Director Arneson, Director Ali and myself are leaving. Um, and uh, I'm glad that we had a collaborative process um, putting this together over a long period of time um, uh, because I don't feel like I don't, I don't wanna, as a person leaving the board, I don't wanna leave the board with a strategic plan that we didn't come, come together and work on collaboratively um, and then just, I'm, I'm out of here. I, as a board member who came on to the board with a strategic plan that I didn't support really, mm -hmm. I didn't think was functional, I know that made it difficult for me as a board member and, it, and it, I think it caused some uh, issues with how our board was able to unite and work collaboratively when I started on the board. I think that uh, it's important that the board has a strategic plan that they can use that will work effectively for them as they move forward. So I, I have to say I am a little disappointed um, that um, Director Cerrillo and Director El Amin are saying that they don't support this document. I'm just gonna call attention to a few of the things that I think are, that I'm proud of um, in, the, in the strategic plan. Um, I, there are some things that I'm not that excited about, but um, uh, just looking through the document itself, uh, I remember the discussion we had about um, explicit anti-racist language and putting that in our vision. 
Um, it says that all students will receive, I'm gonna skip a little bit, but will receive an anti-racist holistic education. And I'm remembering that conversation that we had around that language. Um, and then also the mission as well, schools exist to provide a high quality anti-racist culturally responsive education for every uh, Minneapolis student. And then the commitment, which was added sort of by the staff, as I recall, that wasn't a discussion um, originally from the board, but then came forward and we discussed a month or two ago. Um, to achieve our vision, we will intentionally focus and prioritize resources and actions to significantly improve the experience and outcomes of black students, indigenous students, students of color, and their families. Um, and then there are, there's the list of values as well. Um, equity, representation, and anti-racism, physical and emotional safety and well-being, relationships, trust, and communication, shared decision-making and voice, transparency and accountability, and evidence-based strategies. So, and then there's the goals as well. But I just, uh, I'm really proud of uh, some of that language and the process that we went through to include it. And um, I guess I was hoping that that would, um, we could move forward um, with that sort, with those shared values and that shared mission and commitment. Um, so I'm supporting it. I'm supporting the process that we've been through to get here. Um, and uh, I'm excited for the district to move forward with these values. Thank you, Director Ames. Uh, Director Elamine. Well, I, I guess I too just wanted to go back and point to some of the things um, when we talk about the vision. And the vision to me, again, and I have stressed this in our meetings, is way too vague. We talk about regardless of their background, the zip code and personal needs, will receive an anti-racist holistic education that builds essential knowledge to prepare students for future success. What does that mean? I mean, again, we, we, we are at a crossroad where we have to be very intentional and direct in our language and what we are trying to say and what the results we want to see done for our children. So for me, reading that when I know that my families and children that look like me have been suffered from the system not educating us and doing what we need for our children, that means nothing to me. And I express that during our conversation, during the time, I don't know what thousands of documents we're referencing, but I did express that when we had these meetings. When we talk about a high quality, anti-racist, culturally responsive education for every Minneapolis student, it's, it's too vague. It does not, we're, we're not leaning into the moment to be direct. And I think that's what we need. That's what our families need. We need more direct, we need to see it, we need to feel it. We need to own it on what it is we're trying to do. And I don't see that and I express that during our time that we met together and we had conversation. And so I'm bringing it just back up again because this is the moment. This is the moment for us to lean in and to acknowledge and to recognize and to be bold enough to say what it is we wanna do and how we wanna change it. Thank you. Director Caprini. Thank you, uh, Chair Ellison. Thank you, Director Elamine. Um, when I refer to thousands of documents, I, I should have said thousands of words, um, I'm meaning board books that, you know, the, the documents that we receive. Um, I guess I understand what you're saying. Um, my concern is um, I would need for you to be more specific in what it is that the language should be, because it makes me go into a space where we are trying to find the language to retain teachers of color and trying to find the language to move through this mission and vision. And what I hear are um, uh, leaning towards um, statutes that we don't have any control over. And when it comes to the lowest level of government, I would love to pick up the heaviest burden and be that and say what I believe I believe I hear think you're saying. But we have a statute 
where we are a public institution. We have a responsibility to all students, but we are in a position to craft a vision that speaks to the needs of the students in the city of Minneapolis that live in every single zip code and every corner of this city. Every corner. And in all of those areas, there are thousands of students who look like me, who struggled or are struggling with reading like I did as a child. I'm not ashamed to admit that. Thank you. Director Lemming, are you? Yes. Okay. And, and again, I don't want to go back and forth again. I'm giving you my opinion on what I see and what I don't see when it comes to the strategic plan, when it comes to the, our mission and our vision. I am telling you, I am speaking for myself as a black parent, speaking to other black parents, other black educators, and how, again, we don't see ourselves intentionally being identified with the failures that the system continue to put on our backs. So again, I can't tell you <clears throat> where you fit in at, but I can tell you what I don't see and what I know that other parents and educators, when they look at this, do not see. So whether we vote tonight or we pass, whatever, I am letting you know where I stand, where parents that I've talked to, and what we as a uh, public school entity need to lean more into. Now, when we talk about the statues, and I, I understand that, but we're talking about our vision. We're talking about our mission for Minneapolis Public Schools and how we can address the families that we serve so that we can make sure that everyone feels included. So everyone has their own way of seeing things, doing things. I am telling you what I see and don't see as a black woman who continues to see her community being miseducated and left out and not being addressed in the way that it should to make me feel like, oh, I, I'm part of this. They see me. They're going to take care of me. They're going to help me to reach where I need to go. So, and I'll leave it at that. <clears throat> Thank you, Director Alameen. Uh, Director Ali? Thank you very much, Madam Chair. We, we, we did have a, a great discussion about this strategic planning. And I do believe that we had enough conversations about this. And we can have the best documents. We can put the all nice words we want. But the question is that if we are not delivering it, it's not really helping. So, as 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 I quote from your from the strategic planning, it says the community needs tangible action, not words. So we can have the best documents, but we need the action. So what I am asking my fellow board members and the leaders of the district is that let's own these documents together and let's make it workable this time. We have seen all kind of great documents and nice words, but the results not showing. And I hope this time it will it has to, it must. We exhausted all the excuses to to, to not to meet the needs of our students. And lately, we have been kind of using this tragedy of pandemic we are having. We are trying to hide with our weaknesses and saying that because of pandemic, this has happened. Because of we are not meeting. Because of, because. So I, Sierra Ali, I'm supporting these documents. And I, am, I own it. And I want you also to, to believe in with me, to, to believe it with, with me, unless Deliver it, as we said. We have stated here, and we have promised it to the students, all the students, especially the students that who need help the most, students of color, and students with special needs. 
We have said that here. We're going to take care of the academic achievement. Our goal one is academic achievement. Our goal, our goal two is student well-being. Our goal three is effective, effective teachers, effective staff. Our goal four is the school climate. And what is, I see that we, we want to make sure that all the communities, they see themselves inside the classroom. You know, we want to see ourselves inside the classroom. It's, it's, it's unacceptable where we are now in 21st century of a 60 percentage of our students and not, especially students of color, black students, are not proficient in math and science. Where we're going in this science world if the kids are not proficient in technology and science? So I support and I own it, and I want to say that let us start working. Let us delivering the work. Let us doing the work, all of us together. And I hope this time we will make the difference. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Director Ali. Uh, Director Saria. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I mean, there are just so many concerns, and I should have brought this up before, absolutely, but life happens, and here we, here we are. And um, facing the realities that we are currently, I'm also really concerned about um, the employee retention and keeping teachers of color, because right now the situation uh, with uh, the enrollment decline, you know, what are the numbers and percentages of teachers of color that we're gonna be losing? So we're, we're gonna be voting on something but yet, you know, like the opposite is gonna take place. Does that make sense? Like, we're gonna lose teachers of color, so I just feel like, in a way, hypocritical about, you know, what is going on, and so many of the things are beyond our control. I get it, but these are issues that need to be brought up to, to the public, that people need to know what is happening. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Director Surreal. Director Caprini? question. I'm not sure if that's exactly what, it, what I'm supposed to say, but I, I want to vote. Okay, uh, we have a call up question. We need to vote on this. No. So, all in favor, this is to end discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. That carries. So, um, we will end discussion. Um, before we vote on this, can I say one thing? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. No, okay. <laughs> okay, seeing no further discussion, um, I renew my motion to approve the strategic plan. So moved. Um, I second. I, yes. You moved. I moved. You second. You second. Yes. No discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Nay. That motion carries and this plan is approved. Now I can make comments. <laughs> thank you. I just wanted to thank um, all the directors because we have put a lot of time into this. Um, and I wanted to um, thank staff as well. As Director Inns has said, no plan is perfect. And with something this significant, it's unlikely that everyone will get exactly what they want. But we started this in our retreat in August, and then over the past six months, we kind of focused up, and this is where we ended up. And I do remember um, Director Elamine con being concerned about the mission and vision and the vision and the mission. Um, and then staff's response to that was the commitment. So then we added the commitment. Um, and so I want to thank finally Superintendent Graff, and your entire staff, and especially Senior Officer Moore, for your work and your team for the coordination of all the presentations and discussions on this. So thank you. Um, we have a strategic plan. Well, thank you, everybody. Our final action item this, tonight is a selection of the school calendar for the next three years. I again wanna thank directors and staff for all the work done on this and the calendar committee, acknowledging that the calendar is a particular topic on which um, there are quite a few different perspectives on this. 
Those who have followed this discussion will recall that the board members have asked for some new elements to be considered, um, including um, inclusion of staff professional development days in the middle of the school year, as well as not having school on certain significant religious observations. To that end, rather than coming forward with one recommended calendar, we've asked superintendent and staff to bring us options for discussion and ultimate selection here tonight. So we will first ask Superintendent Graff to provide a quick overview of the available options. I will then see if anyone would like to make any general comments on the calendar before I offer a motion to approve one of the options. Before I turn this over to Superintendent Graff, I will note that for board members and for those listening, we're moving approval of the school calendar, effectively which days we will have school or not and to ensure that the state requirements of minimum hours and days of instructions are met. We are not acting for specifically on employee calendars, we're not establishing district holidays, and we're not talking about the summer school calendar. So Superintendent Graff, please go ahead with our options. Thank you, Chair Ellison. Uh, as you know, the three options we brought forward for board uh, decision are focused on uh, the student instructional or what we refer to as the, the contact days. And certainly the employee calendars do obviously align with the school uh, student calendar. Once the board makes uh, the selection, our human resources team will, will share uh, the employee calendars with staff. I wanna first highlight some of the parts of the calendar options that are shared by all three of the considerations here tonight, which uh, Senior Officer Sullivan also covered, I think last month. All three options do begin after Labor Day. Um, so you will not see any inconsistencies there. Uh, they either have a 171 or 170 instructional days, which is uh, roughly the minimum requirement that we have with the state in terms of student contact days. They all have two full weeks for winter break and a full week for spring break. And all of them do assume an e-learning day plan, which will remain in place for inclement weather days, which essentially means that given the current length of the school for many of our, our school day for many of our schools, there are not enough extra days built in. So just to be mindful of that, every year we get that e-learning plan approved. So again, not having a snow day or um, a day off because of heat would require a day to be added back somewhere back into the calendar if we did not have our e-learning plan approved. Um, so looking at the different options, first one, calendar option one, essentially follows this school year as a model, meaning that there are no additional non-school days um, that have been added to what we have now. And then the last day of school for the next three years would be, I believe, June 9th, June 7th, and June 6th. So essentially it's a, what we might refer to as a status quo. <clears throat> Calendar option two would have two additional non-school days for staff professional development uh, mid-year and to support student, attendance, uh, student attendance um, would not have school on days where certain Muslim or Jewish observations fall on what would otherwise be a school day. <clears throat> and because of how these observations fall over the next three years, either occasionally on weekends or on a day that's not already a school day, this generally means two additional non-school days for this purpose. In, in this second option, as well as in option three, uh, additional non-school days have been incorporated by ending the school year later. So in option two, the last day of school over the next three years would be June 15th, June 14th, and June 11th. And then finally, um, calendar three would add only the two additional mid-year professional development days. In this option, the last day of school would be June 13th, June 11th, and June 10th. So uh, to summary, or to summarize uh, in Chair Ellison, uh, the primary difference between the three options is how late the school year goes in order to accommodate either the professional development days, the religious ob observations, or both. Thank you. Thank you, Superintendent. Uh, before I make a motion, is there anybody who has any comments in general about the three options before us? Director Jordan. Hi, thank you, Chair Ellison. Um, I outlined why I supported option one last month, um, just detailing you know, as you get further into summer, the days get hotter. Um, and a lot of our buildings don't have uh, air conditioning, a lot of our older buildings don't. We have partnerships around the district. Um, 
where they have their own set timeline with outside partners where they need their students to start their um, start their internships or their work experience, you know, and, we're, and if we're going to the 15th, you know, they also have students from other districts that they also have for internships and, and work readiness and job skill trainings. So we're at, so if we are going to the 15th, we're effectively having other districts possibly having to hold their, you know, hold their students back while we finish. Um, and it also pushes back all our other programming, summer school, et cetera, et cetera. But also too, I just wanted to bring back really quickly, you, you know, if we're going to school in June 15th, if you look at the weather in the last several years on June 15th, um, in 2019, it was 74 degrees, but we know that our schools without air conditioning, they're hotter than 74 degrees outside. 2018, it was 94 degrees on June 15th. Now I can guarantee you our schools are a lot hotter than that. 87 in 2017, 74 in 2016, 76, 2015, 75, and 2014. So this is what the type of temperature they're asking our kids to go to school in mid-June. Um, uh, even if they end on the 14th of June, um, 2020 it was 78, uh, 2019 it was 85 degrees out. Uh, 2018 it was 82, 2017 it was 84. So if we're asking our kids to go to school to those two end dates, it's gonna be very hot and muggy, uncomfortable for our students in the classroom. Um, and it also interferes with a lot of our summer plans, but I, I think if, in my, it's my opinion only, that if we go to the later end dates, um, I think we would possibly see, or we will see parents just pull their kids out of school early anyways. They're gonna be like, it's the end of the year, you know, Timmy's got whatever, camp, or we're gonna take an extra couple days off before uh, summer STEM, STEM programming starts. So we're gonna see that anyways, but I'm thinking more along the lines of the temperature of our kids, especially our little ones in the schools, and what they'd be facing. Um, and, 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 I, and I am well aware of that, um, None of these options are gonna make everyone completely happy. Um, so, um, you know, I could, you know, go with the other ones as well. I mean, it, it was, it's been a hard choice, but um, I, I'm still sticking with option one. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Director Elamine. I, I just, <clears throat> thank you, Madam Chair. Um, option two, I, I guess I was just really excited when I saw that option again, um, being a Muslim, um, having Muslim families and friends and just being able to be included in the calendar. Um, it was just really good to feel like, again, we are being inclusive of the families that we are serving. And even though it is a little bit longer into the school year, I think the sacrifice is worth it. Um, it it's just how I feel. And like you said, parents are going to um, make the decision on their own in regards to when they pull their children. And a lot of us really just don't even get to do those family vacations um, and things that we're talking about. So for me, I was excited um, with option two to be more inclusive of our Islamic and our Jewish, you know, the different holidays for the families that we serve. So thank you. Thank you. Director Caprini. I'm sure I'll be corrected quickly by Senior Officer DeVette if uh, <laughs> this is a misstatement. <laughs> um, so um, yeah, it does. It gets really hot in June. I can remember uh, when my kids were at Loring and having, you know, uh, people melt ice um, by the thermostat. Since then, um, we've, you know, put a lot of air conditioning in a lot of our, in a lot of our schools. We still have plenty of schools that need air conditioning. Um, as hot as it can be on the dates uh, that were mentioned, We've also managed through some of the coldest, most frigid air um, in, our, in our winter months. And um, I really appreciate the inclusiveness of the holidays. The other piece that was really concerning to me was um, the chance of losing the two weeks of winter break for a couple of reasons. Uh, the first one is to lose that uh, learning opportunity for our students that are um, that need extra credits of the Winter Academy, losing that, um, I just wasn't able to wrap my head around that. 
The other thing is, you know, our families, a lot of families travel so far away to go and see family and um, during, the, during that time. And I think they, you know, it's the school had just started and then we're right until winter break. And there, you, I think we deserve, people deserve to be able to take off and be gone for, you know, nine days if, if that's what they're able to do. Um, uh, there was one other thing. Oh, this also gives schools the opportunity to kind of um, front load May with a lot of the activities that may have been um, done typically in June. Um, for instance, field day, which is, is a huge, you know, I loved field day and I'm not sure, I don't remember if it was in May or June, but I kind of feel like it was in June. But nevertheless, whatever kinds of activities that would generate extra heat, you can kind of maybe plan for those things to happen, um, you know, either uh, in the beginning of the month or sometime in May. I mean, there's all kinds of creative ideas. I'm willing to help people come up with <laughs> plans, different ideas to, to support schools. Um, so at the end of the day, I'm supporting uh, calendar, uh, I'm sorry, option two, and um, that's what I'm supporting. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Director Ali? Thank you very much, Madam Chair. I, uh, we, 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 a few minutes ago, we passed our strategic planning in which our goal for is a school climate. And school climate is that it's accommodating of our students, regardless of their uh, background and ethnicity and, and their religion as well. So in this uh, option two, clearly accommodates the students and the families and staff of Muslim and Jewish faith. And I believe this is, uh, I can say that if we choose this option for, uh, option two, that means we are starting putting our strategic planning in action within a few minutes. And I, I fully support this, option two. Thank you. Thank you, Director Ali. Director Inns. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Director Ali, you uh, took the words right out of my mouth. Um, uh, I was going to say that um, also, I just add one, one thing. You know, if we think about um, how long, how many decades have we been accommodating uh, uh, Christian holidays and um, uh, white supremacist holidays, white supremacist holidays, right? Um, uh, you, you know, um, as part of our school calendar. And uh, I think about that and, um, you know, if we're looking to shave off days off our calendar, I mean, we have these two weeks that we do at Christmas time, right? And let's not kid ourselves, that's the beginning of the holiday and that the end is New Year's, right? And um, that's just taken for granted that that's a part of our culture and so that's when we have school off. Right, so I'm really proud that it seems to me that we should uh, recognize um, uh, who our communities are that are in our schools and um, that ought to be a part of our calendar. I know as a teacher and you know, as a parent too, like our, if our school calendar goes a little longer than maybe somewhere else, you know, it's gonna be like, ah, oh, can we have school another week more than they do out and wherever and you know, and. Uh, um, but I think we can be proud that the reason we're doing that is because we want to make sure that our school is, as Director Ali said, welcoming to uh, diverse communities as we stated in our strategic plan. So I'm, uh, thank you for bringing this recommendation forward for recommendation two. Thank you. Um, Director Arneson. Thank you. Um, Thanks, I'm, I'm happy to support uh, the second, the adding school days to this calendar to accommodate um, religious holidays and also the professional development. I think those are both um, reasonable and, and strong 
strong proposals. I do just, uh, I'm speaking just to kind of acknowledge that the calendar is traditionally a, a pretty, um, just to acknowledge that there's a lot of competing interests in a calendar and it, you know, and it's just, and we are trying to fit a lot in into a really, you know, into a certain number of days and there's rules and all of these things. So just, and, and it is a, a, to just kind of acknowledge as well, it is challenging, a little extra challenging when we go um, a little longer than maybe other areas, particularly for our high school students, for work, for internships, for all of those things. Now, in this case, for, for me, it, it's not, um, that trade-off isn't worth um, ending earlier or, or not extending the days. I also just, I, I, I did want to just state out loud, um, not now, not for the, not for the immediate future, but um, perhaps in the future, uh, there is a way to, to kind of, um, Come closer to kind of accommodating everybody's concerns by by um, adding a few minutes to the high school and the middle school time, like the the day, right? Like if we add a few extra minutes a day to middle school and high schools, the reality is we would probably make up the four days here that we are debating, which I think is the source of the angst, right? Like I haven't actually heard any angst about having a release day on these religious holidays, it's really just, do we wanna go for four extra days and what are the consequences of that? And there's some alternatives, I think, in the future for us to consider that would get us just slightly closer to everyone being happy, though I am a firm believer that there is no calendar that will make everyone happy in there because there are always trade-offs with calendars. So. Thank you. Director Soria. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I am supporting uh, plan two as well. And I just wanted to mention uh, the PD day, that is something that is uh, greatly appreciated. In my conversations with some principals, uh, they were really happy to have this to be a priority, you know, in full support for them. So yeah, thank you. Thank you. I, um, yes, I was thinking, Director um, Arneson, we could extend the day and make up. However, um, I do believe that there were probably some early September dates that were just as hot as those mid-June dates as well. Um, this, my personal goal is to have year-round school, so going a couple, <laughs> going another week in June, I'm, I'm like kind of okay with that, um, and I do appreciate. Uh, we already miss students are missing school students and staff because they are with their families. Um, whether they're Jewish or Muslim and they have a high holy day or, you know, a very important day for their um, family, they're already missing school. So it's maybe they'll miss it at the end of the school year. Maybe they're missing it in the middle of the year. Um, so that's how I kind of feel on this. And I've heard enough comments on this to say I'm going to move approval um, of what is identified as calendar option two on our meeting materials, which is the option that has two additional professional development days embedded during the year and does not have school on certain portions of significant religious observation days when they fall on a typically scheduled school day um, as a way to support student attendance. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Approval of the school calendar option two has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion specifically about option two? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Nay. That motion carries. Thank you. Calendar option two has been approved. Our final item this evening is for directors to give a brief update on the committees they chair on any other board related activities. For our student representatives, even if you're not ready to share an update tonight, I understand, but just want to let you know this is typically a time of the meeting where you could provide us with an update of what's happening in citywide or any other um, key ideas that are top of mind for students. So um, directors, if you have any comments, please hit your request to speak button and I'll run through the list. We've got Director Inns. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm excited about my new position as chair of the policy committee. Our next meeting is February 22nd at 4.30 p.m. Um, we're gonna be doing a regular review of several policies, starting the process of revising our vision and mission policy as per our strategic plan vote. I'm already working on that tonight, actually. <laughs> and then uh, here a report about an EDIA that we've been doing um, on the site council policy. So I know a lot of people are excited about that. 
So that's February 22nd, 4.30 p.m. Uh, thank you, Chair Ellison. Um, Finance Committee meets next Tuesday at 5 o'clock. Yes, 5 o'clock. <laughs> um, I'm also excited about tomorrow um, as the newly um, appointed um, or voted uh, member of the Minnesota School Board Association. I have my first call tomorrow with um, Senator Tina Smith and uh, Senator Klobuchar, separate calls, and it's not just the two of us. <laughs> it's with a lot of people, so I, they won't even know I'm in the room. <laughs> but I'm just excited about the conversation, um, and I just I will be able to share out uh, whatever we discuss next time we meet. All right, thanks. Thank you. Tomorrow, Director Elamin and I will represent us at the Youth Coordinating Board, and I just wanted to make the link um, that was in the, our consent agenda today. The last time the Youth Coordinating Board met, we approved, they um, issued a, they had money from the city to um, extend or expand youth programming, youth out of school opportunities, and they had a, a, lot, of, a lot of applications, and they were able to award um, contracts to some of them, um, but they had some that they weren't able to award, and so I'm appreciating that in our contract, in our consent agenda tonight, that we're working with the Youth Coordinating Board to identify some other um, out-of-school opportunities for, for students, and, and that, that's a direct work with our, with our partnership with the YCB. Thank you. Thank you. Student Representative Wesson. Um, thank you, Chair. Uh, just to provide kind of a quick update on the student side of things, um, for Citywide, uh, we had a last meeting about a week ago, I believe. I might be wrong on some of these things, but um, we talked about um, communication with different schools. Our goal this year is to really, part of our goal actually this year is to really um, fix, um, improve communications to students, gaining input um, to come to Citywide and to come to the student board reps. So um, that's something we're working on. And um, just something to be aware of uh, as uh, students, um, the walkout today at various mm -hmm. um, high schools and schools across the city and um, around the metro area, I think that's something to be really, really be aware of. And um, some of the comments made by students here today. Um, so yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Director Ali. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. As, as, as a board representative, for the Council of Great City Schools. Uh, next month, uh, March 19th, I will be attending on your behalf to the uh, Legislative Policy Conference in Washington, D.C. And if, if you would like to share with me or give me some information is that you want me to carry on your behalf, please uh, reach out to me and I will be Happy to have some discussions with you, what's the upcoming agenda, and so on. So, so thank you. Thank you, Director Ali. Um, I will just say, I've, I've, I'll just speak on some things I've attended, because everyone's kind of spoken like things that are coming up um, that I was going to mention. Um, I did attend the um, American Indian Parent Advisory Committee meeting yesterday, um, heard from some parents, and with the passing, what I wanted to tell them and want them to know is with the passing, I heard them and what their concerns are with the passing of our strategic plan tonight. I'm hoping that the curriculum and the staffing and the funding of American Indian um, students will be addressed um, with our strategic plan. And so that's encouraging. The Minnesota Education Equity Partnerships Program is doing a seminar. I attended one of their seminars. They have a couple more coming up on critical race theory and debunking the myth. So. Um, if anybody's interested, you could probably find that on their website, um, MSBA. Are, I'm still continuing my weekly calls with the Council of Great City Schools. As you know, Director Arley will be attending an upcoming um, conference and an American, African American Parent Involvement Day week of activities. You can look that up on our website, but Superintendent Graff talked about that this morning, earlier today, not this morning. So that is all I have. Um, so seeing nobody else here, that concludes our agenda. So without objection, I will now adjourn this meeting. I just wanna let you know our next meeting is Committee of the Whole. It's gonna be on Tuesday, February 22nd. Any members of the public who want to attend, um, please remember to 
sign up at our website or by calling our board office as in accordance with our current board meeting guidelines. Good night, everybody.